subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia news line I'm Yeshi Chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 29th of October Prime Minister Modi holds talks on trade with leaders of European Union and Commission ahead of G20 summit in Rome Locals and political activists hold massive rally against inflation in Gilgit Baltistan and Dozens of displaced families receive aid amid rising poverty in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday arrived in Italy to participate in the G20 summit, the Global Forum for International Cooperation, where he will join other leaders in discussions on global economic and health recovery from COVID-19, sustainable development and climate change. On the eve of the G20 summit, PM Modi on Friday held a joint meeting with Charles Michael, President of European Council, and Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, and held an extensive discussion covering trade and investment ties, climate change, COVID-19, global and regional developments. The Prime Minister later paid floral tributes to India's freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi's bust at Piazza Gandhi and also interacted with members of the Indian community gathered there. PM Modi is expected to hold bilateral meetings with heads of several states on the sidelines of the G20 summit. On October 30, he is scheduled to meet Pope Francis at the Vatican and will attend the G20 summit. Following the conclusion of the summit on October 31st, PM Modi will depart for Glasgow to attend the 26th Conference of Parties COP26 to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Indian Army Chief General MM Narawne on Friday said The theaterization process of the country's military is underway and new technology is being inducted keeping in view of the changing character of wars. The remarks came as India has been boosting its military might along the line of actual control amid the ongoing border row with China. Indian Army Chief General MM Narawne on Friday asserted that the theaterization process of the country's military is underway. and new technology is being inducted into the armed forces keeping in view the changing character of wars attending the passing out parade of the 141st course at the national defense academy in western pune general narawne said amongst the three armed forces there is a better understanding and if they integrate they can bring about transformation he also hailed the move to open the portals of the defense academy to women cadets from next month the character of war has been changing over the years and over the years technology has come to play a more and more important role in the way wars are prosecuted and that will always be the way forward this comes as india is boosting its military might and has most recently also built an air space control center along the line of actual control in northeastern arunachal pradesh state which security analysts have warned could become a flashpoint amid ongoing border row with china in ladakh region a news from pakistan pakistan's interior minister sheikh rashid ahmed has warned the supporters of banned islamist outfit tehreek e lebek pakistan to stop their march towards capital islamabad or there will be consequences The government has said that it would not agree to the group's demand of expulsion of the French ambassador over caricatures of Islam's prophet published in a magazine in France which Muslims consider blasphemous. Pakistan's interior minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed on Thursday warned the supporters of proscribed outfit DLP Tehreek e Lebek Pakistan to go back and stop their march towards capital Islamabad. or things will be out of his hands this came after thousands of tlp supporters began marching from lahore city towards capital islamabad on thursday 
The government has said that it would not agree to their demand of formally expelling the ambassador of France over caricatures of Prophet Muhammad published in a French magazine, which Muslims consider blasphemous. The interior minister said he had spoken to TLP's imprisoned leader, Saad Hussein Rizvi, by phone. But further talks will be held only if the protesters go back or else there will be consequences. Meanwhile, Pakistan's National Security Advisor Mohit Yusuf in a series of tweets on Thursday said that the proscribed organization has crossed a red line after at least four police personnel were killed in violent clashes this week. It is the group's third countrywide protest campaign since 2017 over the caricatures that are considered deeply insulting by Muslims. Moving on, the opposition PMLN party recently held a massive protest rally in Gilgit, Baltistan over the skyrocketing inflation and blamed Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan for failing to control the frequent price rise of essential commodities. The protesters, including locals of the illegally occupied region, expressed it has become difficult for them to survive and they want to get rid of the tyrannical government. The opposition Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN party recently held a massive protest rally in Gilgit, Baltistan against Prime Minister Miran Khan's government over skyrocketing inflation, which they claim has made the survival of people difficult. Scores of protesters, including locals, marched out of the houses to take part in the rally in the illegally occupied region. They blame the failed policies of Prime Minister Khan have led to frequent price rise of all essential commodities in recent months. They express they want to get rid of the tyrannical government to bring about development. <laughs> Meanwhile, Pakistan's finance ministry in a recent report this week warned that the exchange rate, commodity supplies and seasonality could further intensify the magnitude of prices and transportation costs in the country. The country's inflation rate was mainly driven by monetary and supply-side factors, including domestic and international commodity prices and dollar exchange rate, the report said. The United Nations cannot get enough cash into Afghanistan to deliver humanitarian aid to millions of people on the brink of starvation and is struggling to develop options to help stabilize the collapsing economy. UN officials have said aid agencies are in a race against time to deliver life-saving aid to crisis-affected people and preposition supplies ahead of winter. In capital Kabul on Thursday, aid agencies distributed foodstuffs, blanket and cash to 130 displaced families. Amid rising poverty and warnings of starvation in Afghanistan, Aid agencies distributed foodstuffs, blankets and cash to 130 displaced families in capital Kabul on Thursday. Around 9 million Afghans are just one step away from starvation. UNHRC, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees spokesperson Babar Baloch said, adding that 700,000 people, mostly women and children, have been displaced this year alone. United Nations officials have said the UN cannot get enough cash into Afghanistan to deliver humanitarian aid and that it is struggling to develop options to help stabilize the collapsing economy. 
uh, we are trying to bring as much uh, uh, supplies from all around the world. At times, uh, we see many border disruptions all, all around uh, in Afghanistan, neighboring countries as well. We need to fly in aid into Afghanistan as well. So these are all challenges that we have to navigate as humanitarian. So the appeal to everyone, international community, please step forward with resources so that we can reach uh, more uh, Afghans who need our help. Displaced Afghans said people are tired of the current situation. The Taliban is facing growing international pressure for an inclusive and representative Afghan government and to uphold human rights, particularly those of women and girls, in return for international recognition and freeing up aid and reserves. Donors and institutions are also seeking to avoid running a fall of UN and unilateral sanctions on the Taliban. Meanwhile, the United States has sent another nearly $144 million in humanitarian assistance for those affected by the ongoing crisis in Afghanistan and for Afghan refugees in the region, with total such aid for 2021 now nearly $474 million, US dollars, the State Department said on Thursday. Holding opposition BNP and the Islamist organization Jamaat, among others responsible for fomenting communal tension in Bangladesh, Information and Broadcasting Minister Hassan Mahmood called the recent attacks on minority Hindus a ploy by fundamentalists to destabilize the country and create anarchy. Bangladesh's Information and Broadcasting Minister M. Hassan Mahmood on Thursday blamed opposition BNP, Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the Jamaat, among others, responsible for fomenting communal tension in the country and said recent attacks on people from minority Hindu community, there was a ploy by fundamentalists to destabilize country and create anarchy. Speaking at Kolkata Press Club in eastern India, Mahmood said that PM Sheikh Hasina's government has taken tough action against perpetrators of these attacks and asserted that his government aims to root out communalism and fundamentalism. In Bangladesh, no Hindu or no Muslim has the mentality to put Quran in, in Pujabandha or to put Gita in mosque. No, no, no people. Uh, believe in that. They don't have the mentality. So this was a ploy, a political ploy, by the parties, by the fundamentalists, to destabilize the country and to create an anarchy. Meanwhile, in reaction to Bangladeshi Foreign Minister A.K. Abdul Momen remarks that no one was raped and not a single temple was destroyed in recent attacks, Iskons media in charge in Prayagraj Venu Vijay on Friday rejected his claim, calling it false. Das said that Hindu temples in Bangladesh were vandalized and everyone has seen it. Momen in a statement on Thursday had said that contrary to all the ongoing propaganda, only six people died during recent violence. He accepted that idols of deities or goddesses were vandalized. On Thursday, several BNP supporters were arrested in Bangladesh and over 400 charged with vandalism and rioting at Durga Puja Marquis. However, BNP leader described the police action as a ploy of the ruling party to malign them. As Diwali, the festival of lights, is just around the corner, people across India are in a festive spirit. In a bid to promote eco-friendly celebrations, a non-governmental organization in eastern Bhubaneswar city has been running a campaign to gift plants instead of bursting firecrackers, which is a usual practice during Diwali. People across India are in a festive spirit as Diwali, the festival of lights, is just around the corner. But people are now cautious and also concerned about the environment amidst the festive season. In order to promote eco-friendly Diwali celebrations, a non-governmental organization in eastern Bhubaneswar city is running a campaign to give plants this festive season instead of burning firecrackers, which is a usual practice that immensely degrades the air quality in the days after. The organization is making complimentary gift hampers with a plant, hand-painted diyas or earthen lamps and homemade chocolates. Because unless there is a value that I attach to trees, I may just plant trees as a tokenism and then I'll forget about it. 
so we thought how do we do that how does this cultural association you know how do we strengthen that meanwhile in mitnapur town in india's west bengal state artisans are busy making dolls for decorations for diwali due to covid-19 situation last year the businesses were badly affected but this time they hope for better sales Diwali, India's biggest and the most important holiday of the year for majority Hindus, will be celebrated on November 4. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.